Holocaust Remembrance Day, the 63rd anniversary of the liberation of the death camps at Auschwitz and Birkenau. Allied soldiers from many lands had to deal with the aftermath of Nazi horrors. Among them, a little known group of U.S. soldiers called the Monuments Men. Their story is our cover story, reported now by Rita Braver. You may have heard about Nazis destroying and looting art all over Europe. But you may not know that the looting, tons of works taken from both personal and public collections, was perhaps the greatest pillage in history, as much a part of Nazi war planning as military conquest. If you have an interest in art history, you have an interest in World War II. If you like extraordinary uh, treasure hunts, it's got something for everybody. There's no way you can't be interested in this story. A story that haunts Robert Edsel. I like to think of it as, as a passion, some say obsession, but um, there's so much of the story to be revealed. Edsel's obsession came late. A professional level tennis player from Dallas, he went on to make a fortune in oil and gas. <laughs> By age 39, he was a multimillionaire and ready for a change of pace. He sold his business and moved to Florence. Before that, not being Jewish himself, and with no relatives caught up in the Holocaust, he'd not thought much about the Nazis' impact on European art. What got you interested in this? I was walking across one of the bridges in Florence one day, the Ponte Vecchio, the one bridge that wasn't destroyed during World War II by the Nazis, and it occurred to me almost this epiphany about how did all these great works of art survive the destructiveness of World War II, and who were the people that saved them? Hey, Patricia, let me ask you about this file. What he learned staggered him. And now he spent millions of dollars of his own money to write a book called Rescuing Da Vinci. Adolf Hitler purged art he hated, and he stole art he coveted. And co-produced a documentary titled The Rape of Europa, all to tell the story. Today, even after more than 60 years, lost art is still being found. Battle damage is still being repaired, and stolen masterpieces are still caught up in bitter disputes. All of this is the unfinished business of the greatest war in history. For one thing, there was the systematic way the Nazis went about stealing art. How, for example, Hitler's second-in-command, Hermann Goering, would line up items for his own collection and Hitler's making repeated visits to the Jeux de Pomme Museum in Paris. Where he could have a glass of champagne, smoke a cigar, and make these selections of works and for his own collection. Them. And just take them. And load them up on his trains, load them up on the planes, and send them back to Germany. But what really cut through to Edsel was that while the Nazis were stealing and sometimes destroying treasures, the U.S. was making heroic efforts to safeguard art and architecture, even creating special maps to show pilots the structures they should avoid. We've been hitting targets around Florence for a long time, but we haven't actually hit in the city itself because approximately 10% of the world's art treasures are located right here in Florence. It's a huge change in the history of warfare to try and fight a war on the one hand and mitigate damage to cultural treasures at the same time. And when the war was over, there was another extraordinary effort to return the art the Nazis had looted. Under the command of General Dwight Eisenhower, a small band of American men and women, including many art historians, was assigned to find and return looted art. Some 200 in all, they became known collectively as the Monuments Men. 20 years old, just turned 20 over here. It must have been February or March of 1946, this picture was taken. Harry Ettinger, a German-born American, was one of those people who found and saved the art. Here, he's holding a masterpiece he uncovered. I'm looking at a picture of uh, a self-portrait of Rembrandt uh, along with uh, Lieutenant Ford. 
Ettinger still marvels at what the United States did. We Americans, for the first time in the history of civilization, adopted a policy which said to the victors, do not belong to the spoils of war. They weren't always successful. The documentary shows how villagers hijacked a train carrying the last shipment of art that Hermann Goering had tried to amass. Hundreds of paintings and sculptures were scattered in at least six different structures. But the monuments men had huge successes, too. The Castle of Neuschwanstein housed a great part of the art treasures stolen by the Nazis. They found a castle full of property stolen from the Rothschilds and other French Jews. And they discovered Hitler's personal art hoard deep in a salt mine in the Austrian Alps. For art historians like yourself, what was the importance of the group that came to be known as the Monuments Men? Oh, they're of vital importance. Not only did they save this art and rescue it, but the records they kept in the restitutions are used by art historians today to track the provenance of paintings in our collection. So the National Gallery has always kind of known the history of these paintings? Yes, actually, we've always researched the provenance of the Nancy Yida, head of curatorial records at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, is studying how the Nazis went about looting and how the monuments men went about tracking the rightful owners of each piece. The painting behind you is one that was taken by the Nazis from a private Family. Yeah, this painting was actually confiscated from a private dealer, a dealer stock, the Seligman Gallery in Paris. And then it was taken by Goering and kept in his personal collection throughout the war. And it was recovered by the Monuments Men with the rest of Goering's collection in Berchtesgaden. Later, the family sold the piece, which is how it ended up here. These works, too, were returned by the Monuments Men and sold by their legitimate owners. The Nazis had seized them in Austria. There's such an irony there. You have people who are in the middle of committing genocide, and yet here they are fancying themselves connoisseurs of art. Yes, it is actually very ironic. The very people that they were eradicating, they were taking their art and keeping track of from whom they took the art from. Uncovering the story of how Americans helped return some of that art earned Robert Edsel the 2007 National Humanities Award. I dreamed of a day when these unsung heroes would, as a group, finally receive the recognition of the United States. And last spring, resolutions were passed in both houses of Congress to recognize the work of the Monuments Men. Um, they were overlooked after the war, and I think, but these uh, Congress people and senators uh, fully embraced the story as I went around and told them. In fact. In the Senate, I literally spent four days in Washington going to every single Senate office to take a copy of my book to each one of these senators to try and personally explain to them who they were, why it's important, why I've committed so much of my life to tell the story. Four of the 12 living Monuments men, including Harry Ettinger, came to Washington to reminisce about a time and place where good really did triumph over evil. Let us announce again and again and again to the people of the world that their culture will be cherished as long as they respect the culture of others. God bless you. God bless America. Sunday visit to the Stone House.